Welcome to the Maths for Engineers video. We'll be looking at the sine wave and the format of y equals a sine omega t. We'll look at the unit circle and angular motion and omega, the angular velocity, and we'll look at phase. So we have y equals a sine omega t, the general equation for a sine wave, where a is the amplitude and omega t is an angle. The period is the amount of time for one cycle or one waveform, and it's equal to 1 divided by the frequency and vice versa. The unit circle is a circle with the radius of one unit. The radius is equal in length to the hypotenuse, and this also represents the amplitude. The sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, of course. So, with y equals sine omega t, when omega t is equivalent to 30 degrees or pi over 6 radians, the sine of that is 50% or 0 0.5. So, at 30 degrees or pi over 6 radians, the opposite side is half as long as the hypotenuse. And at 45 degrees or pi over 4 radians, if we do the sine of that, it is equal to 71% or 0 0.71. So the sine of 45 degrees, the opposite side is 71% as long as the hypotenuse. And that's no matter how long the hypotenuse is, that's always true. The sine of 60 degrees or pi over 3 radians, the sine function is 0 0.87. As the angle in the right angle triangle approaches 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians, the sine function approaches 1, which means the opposite side length is nearly as big as the hypotenuse length. And finally, when omega t does equal 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians, the opposite side and the hypotenuse side are the same length. And this means that the right angle triangle has no width and it kind of collapses in on itself temporarily. So y equals a sine omega t, which is 1 times the sine of an angle for this particular waveform because the amplitude is 1. The amplitude here is 1 and that is the unit circle radius or the hypotenuse length. The amplitude is always the maximum value that a sine function gets to away from the x-axis, but it doesn't have to equal 1. Understanding omega. Omega is the angular frequency or angular velocity. It's how much angle is spun through per second. It's the angle in a circle times how many circles we spin through per second. So it's equal to the angle in a circle times the spin frequency. That's why it's 2 pi times f, where f is the frequency of the spin. It's also equal to 2 pi over the period. Its units are radians per second. So we have a particular example here where the period for one cycle or one waveform of this sine wave should be one second. We can see the unit circle at the top spinning anticlockwise and we can see how the sine function progresses with time and at the top right we can see the value of the opposite side length of the right angle triangle, because this is the sine function. How omega affects an xy graph. In this example, we've got a period of about three and a half seconds. So the frequency is one divided by that. So we have 0 0.28 cycles per second for this particular waveform. And the two top equations will show you how to work out omega. 
So one cycle is taking around three and a half seconds. And then we change the frequency, which changes omega. The higher the frequency, the bigger omega is, and the faster the unit circle or the circle spins. And it's slowed down again here. Here, omega is increasing because the frequency of spin is increasing, like a wheel spinning faster and faster. In real life, a lot of the time, and for our calculations, omega is constant. And it's always equal to 2 pi f. Things like Earth's spin and Earth's orbit around the Sun are pretty constant. So y equals 1 sine omega t, which is just sine omega t. So here, whatever's in front of the t in the bracket is omega. So here, omega equals 2 pi, but omega always equals 2 pi f. So here, f must be one cycle per second, or one hertz. Use these two equations to work out frequency and period, if you know what omega is, and you'll usually be given it. This has a frequency of one hertz, or one cycle per second, and a period of one second. Just remember that omega is always in front of the t in the bracket. Here we've doubled omega because the frequency of spin has doubled. So omega is 4 pi here, and this means that there are two cycles in one second compared to the, the blue waveform. So f is 2 hertz, and the period big T is 1 over 2, which is 0 0.5 seconds. Here omega is worth 6 pi. So the frequency is 6 pi divided by 2 pi, which is 3 hertz. So the period is 1 over 3, which is 0 0.3 recurring seconds. And we can see three waveforms here fit in where one did before. Now the frequency is four times as fast, f equals 4 hertz. So we can fit four complete spins of the circle, or four sine wave waveforms, in compared to the blue waveform. Visualizing omega t as an angle, there's two ways that I like to do this. Omega is the angular velocity or angular frequency, is how fast our circle is spinning. It's equal to 2 pi f, but because the frequency is 1 divided by the period, it's also equal to 2 pi divided by the period t. So omega t on the left is 2 pi f t, where t is a point in time, and omega t is an angle. And on the right hand side, we can say that omega t is 2 pi over the period times t. And this gives us 2 pi times the point in time divided by the period. Remember these two equations or formulae. So, what I call the frequency visualization, omega t equals 2 pi f t. So, omega t is equal to 2 pi times the frequency of spin times a point in time. Omega t is an angle in a circle times circle per second times seconds. So it's the angle in a circle times the number of circles that we've spun to up to point t. So omega t is an angle. The fraction of a period visualization is another way of thinking about omega t. So when time is equal to zero, the sine wave output is equal to zero. And this is also true for any multiple of the period before or after. And then on the right hand side, some time later, we've spun a little bit through the circle. So t has a different value. And if it takes the period t to spin through one complete circle, then it's going to take a smaller amount of time, little t, to spin through part of a circle. Remember, there's two pi radians in a circle. 
So little t compared to the period is just a fraction of one spin. So omega t is just a fraction of two pi radians. So omega t simply gives us the angle in a sector. It's just the angle that we spin through in part of a spin. So some real time simulations as f changes. So here we're spinning through a third of a spin per second. So the frequency is one third hertz because it's taking three seconds to spin through a whole circle. So the period is three seconds. Now we're spinning through one whole circle per second, so the frequency is one hertz. So the period must be one divided by one. The period here is one second. Now we're spinning more frequently, we're spinning twice through the circle in one second. So f is two hertz. So the period is one over two, or half a second. t is equal to half a second. And now we're spinning through four circles per second. The frequency is four hertz. So the period is one over four or a quarter of a second. Converting between radians and degrees. Radians compared to two pi is the same as degrees compared to 360 for a circle, say. So if we multiply both sides by 2 pi, we get radians equals degrees times 2 pi over 360, or degrees equals 360 times radians over 2 pi. Then the bottom two equations cancel down by 2. It's worth remembering this, but that's how you work them out from the top. Some tips regarding engineering trig. If your question mentions omega, use radians mode on your calculator by selecting the correct angle setup. If it mentions 2 pi, use radians mode. And if it mentions omega or 2 pi, then it's probably something spinning and is a periodic wave. Everything can be described with degrees or radians because they describe the same triangle and the same systems. It's like miles per hour compared to kilometers per hour. They describe the same actual speeds in different units. And remember the sine function gives us a vertical component or opposite side. Cosine gives us the adjacent or horizontal and tangent gives us the vertical compared to the horizontal. Understanding phase. So we've got two voltages with a reference voltage in the middle, V1 and V2. If the overall phase shift between them is a multiple of 2 pi, then they're said to be in phase. They're happening at the same time in the same direction. Here V1 has what we call a phase lead. V1 is leading by pi over 2 radians, and V2 is lagging a normal sine wave by 1.5 pi radians, but the overall phase shift between the two is a multiple of 2 pi, or a multiple of 360 degrees. So V1 and V2 are still in phase with each other because of the overall shift is a multiple of 2 pi. Just a reminder of what they would look like if they had no phase shift. And now V1 has happened, it started later, so as a phase lag, so that's a minus phase shift of pi over two radians. V2 started sooner, so as a positive phase shift or a phase lead of one and a half pi, which is three quarters of a cycle. And between the two of them, the overall phase shift is a multiple of two pi. So they are in phase with each other. You can use degrees, of course. V1 is sine theta and V2 is sine theta. But now V1 has a phase lag of 270 degrees or three quarters of a circle. And V2 is leading by 90 degrees or a quarter of a circle. So between the two of them, the overall phase shift 
is a multiple of 360 degrees, so they're in phase with each other. V1 is leading by three quarters of a cycle, and V2 has a phase lag of one and a quarter cycles or spins, and between them is 720 degrees, which is a multiple of 360, so they were in phase with each other. Again, with these two voltages, V1 and V2, the overall phase shift is 1080 degrees, which is a multiple of 360. It's three whole waveforms, so they are in phase with each other. So thanks for watching. I hope it was useful, and uh, please comment with more video suggestions. All the best.